Hello and welcome to this guide for photoshopping iPod graffiti brought to you by photoguides.net. Today we're going to learn how to take a photo like this one by Nestor Baltadano off Flickr and turn it into an incredible piece of iPod graffiti in just a few simple steps. I've chosen Nestor Baltadano's photo for two main reasons. The first one being that it's got a breakdancing person in it. This of course goes with the iPod graffiti styling. My second reason is for the background. The background will have a huge impact on your end result. This one is simple, it's clean, but the colours and styling will make it excellent for the graffiti effect. If you haven't got a photo like this of your own, you can always just go into Flickr and search for breakdancing. You're bound to find something you like. So once you've got your photo sorted, you can go ahead and open it up in Photoshop. The first step will be to cut out your person. To do this, we'll need the Polygon Lasso tool. Every time you then click, a new anchor point will be set. You'll need to trace around the whole person. This can be quite a long and tedious process, which is why I've done mine in Fast Forward, but if you take the time with this then you'll notice a much better result. Once you've finished cutting out your person, you'll need to right click on the selected section and select Layer via Copy. It's on this new layer, containing just the person, that we'll add the silhouette effect to. To do this, right click on the new layer and select the blending options. You'll then need to select Color Overlay. Traditionally, iPod Graffiti is done in black, being for the silhouette. However, I'm going to try it in white, just to be a bit more stylish. Select OK, and we'll go on to the next step. This is the step where your iPod Graffiti will really start to take shape. Add a new layer, and then position it in between the layer of your background and your person. You'll then need to move over to your colour palette on the left, and choose yourself a new colour. Reds, oranges and blues seem to work quite nicely. I'm going to choose myself a blue for this example. Select OK, and then choose the Paint Bucket tool. Paint your new colour on your layer. Now this is the important step. Go over to your blending modes on the right just above your layers and change your blending mode to hard light. This will be the essence of your graffiti styling. At this point, if you're not happy with your colour, just hit Ctrl or Command U and then adjust the hue or saturation of your image. Here you can experiment with different colours or just tweak your current one. I'm going to add a little bit more green to mine and make it a bit brighter. We can now add some effects to your background, but we'll first need to unlock it by holding down ALT and then double clicking on the layer. We can then discard all the colour information making the image black and white by hitting CTRL or COMMAND SHIFT U. You may have noticed a second blue layer has appeared. Don't worry, you haven't missed a step, this was just me mucking around earlier and I forgot to delete the layer. We can then go ahead and add some noise to your background layer. To do this, go into FILTER, NOISE and then select ADD NOISE. You can fiddle with the settings here. I'm going to choose Uniform with Monochromatic Set. The amount really depends on your image. Once you're done, just hit OK. We're now going to go into Filter, Artistic and select Film Grain. Adding this film grain will enhance the black and white points of your image, as well as add a grain to it, which will give it much more of a graffiti styling. As another tweak, you can go into Images, Adjustment and then select Brightness and Contrast. Bring the contrast slider right up. At this point, the basic structure to graffiti photo has been complete. We will though need to enhance your image by using some brushes which aren't actually included on Photoshop. To do this, you'll need to go onto Google and search for grunge brushes. Any of these search results should do. You should be able to build up a fair collection just by following the links on Google, but you can also find the direct download links of the ones I'm using at photoguides.net slash photoshopping iPod graffiti. Once your downloads are complete, you'll have to open the .abr file. You'll notice a new set of brushes appear in the default set on Photoshop. Before you start experimenting with these brushes, remember to create a new layer so that way you can always edit your brushes without affecting your original image. Play around with the different colours, sizes, brushes, opacities and blending modes to try and make your photo unique and stylish. You might also like to add a vignette to your colour layer. To do this, go into Filters, Distort and select Lens Correction. You can adjust the level of the vignette by changing the amount. When you're done, just click OK. This vignette, combined with the hard light blending mode, will add to the grunge styling of your photo and make your edges appear a lot more worn and torn. Another common stylistic feature of Artbog Graffiti is to add a shadow to your image. Now in this example it will be quite difficult due to the angle of the ground. To add a shadow, you'll need to first duplicate your person layer, then add a new layer, select both new layers, right click and select merge layers. This has the equivalent effect of rasterizing your person layer. 
allowing you to freely transform it and make it into a shadow. You'll now need to enter free transform mode by pressing either Control or Command T. Here you'll need to use the transform, skew, distort and perspective modes to help you shape and position your image to look like a shadow. Once again, you'll have to go into blending modes, select color overlay, but this time change the color to black. You may also like to fiddle with the opacity of the shadow. In this case, it doesn't really apply. As a final step, we're going to add a drop shadow to our silhouette layer to really bring it out from the picture. To do this, right click on the layer and select blending options. Up the top, click on drop shadow. Adjust the size so it really spreads out and lifts the image out of the background. So there we have it, iPod Graffiti in just a few minutes. Once you've tried this tutorial once or twice for yourself, you'll be able to create incredible iPod Graffiti photos in no time at all. Remember you can find all the downloads and links you need to try this for yourself at photoguides.net slash photoshopping dash iPod graffiti. I'm Ash Davies from photoguides.net.